Cup is a new iteration of a favorite sport. Whoa! Hello, Sharks. I'm Alex Van Allen. And I'm John Perlich. We're from Ipswich, Massachusetts, and we're here seeking $300,000 for 10% of our company, Fling Golf. Sharks, golf courses have a big problem. Over 1,800 of them have closed in the last decade, and the average golfer gets older every year. You see, young people, they just think that golf is too expensive. It's too hard to learn, there's too many clubs, it takes too long, and many just find it boring. And we've developed the antidote for boring. It's called Fling Golf. It's the cool athletic alternative to regular golf. You play fling golf with a regular golf ball, but instead of lugging around a set of clubs and hitting the ball, you're using a single fling stick to throw the golf ball oh and shape God. every kind of shot from tee to hole. Yeah, you can take long shots, flop shots, bump and runs, and on the green, the color of money. You can even use it to putt. Most people can learn to play within 10 minutes. Some are even out there bombing at 250 yards. So just like snowboarders are welcome on ski resorts, fling golf can be played right alongside traditional golf. Best part is, courses don't need to make any changes at all. They just let the people play. Fling Golf has already been played on over a thousand golf courses. Wow. So we've developed an entirely new product, a new sport embraced by a younger generation and accepted by golf courses across the globe. Who wants to go on the fling of their lifetime and help us scale up the future of the fairway? All right, who wants to come on up? I'll try it out. I don't know <laughs> anything about golf. It's not golf. Wait, hold on. <laughs> you all should do what Mark's doing. <laughs> Aim that way. Daniel, you're throwing it this way? Yeah, you might want to really go away. Let me show you. What you do is you hold it back here, you put, you drop it way down your back, then put your other hand up, and then... There you go. There you go. Oh, nice. Right. So, guys, you've invented lacrosse on the golf course. Right. Basically, lacrosse and golf, and that was sort of my background. Gotcha. All right, so you drop it way down your back. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good. Nice, good. yeah. Uh, very cool. Just a few shots. All right, guys, look. I am a member of the golf club. No chance in hell are they going to let anybody run around with a lacrosse racket. Zero. <laughs> no, they do. It's been played at the country club in Brookline. It's like snowboarding and skiing. We're getting into the golf courses. But ultimately, it's going to be like there's no reason not to. But the golf gods would strike you dead with that thing. We don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Or not golf. Let's say you you get good, you can go far and straight, but then when you get to the green, what happens? Oh, you turn into a golf club. You yep. can do a flop shot. You can yep. do a bump and run. Hang on, this is your only club. This is your it's putter. Your one this is so your it's chipping your wedge. You do everything with it. This is the one thing that might get me to a golf course. <laughs> but I mean, you could hurt somebody if you hit them. Yeah. Yes. This, is, real this is way more accurate than golf. How many courses have you sold this to? The, sold. The, the, a set of clubs, that, that's a good indication. About, about 300. So what's the model? How does it work? We sell to both golf courses and the consumer. We focused a lot in the last few years on the golf courses. We want that acceptance. We want people to know that if they buy one of these things from us, they can go out on any golf course and play. Longer term, the focus is really going to be the consumer. How are you going to get the golf course to like educate anybody playing about the stick? The specific golf courses that are doing well with it are like resorts. They're able to advertise to people that aren't just the people coming in to play golf. When people right. arrive, they'll say, hey, Bring your family, even if you're a golfer, bring your kids. We'll give them a fling stick and then go out with you and play golf. So guys, I did an investment in a company called Bad Birdie. They're the cool golf shirts. COVID hits, I'm thinking their business is going to die. Right. Like it, it's just gonna go nowhere. Golf is on fire. Because of the distance. It's, it's one of the, one of the few things yeah. you can actually do outside. They're gonna do three and a half million this year. Right. So you're definitely on trend. What I'm struggling with is, how do you capture a customer base? The focus has been on golf courses, but we're selling as much to consumers. Actually, in terms of numbers, we're selling more to consumers than we are how to much? golf courses. What did you sell last year? Last year, we sold 142,000. 140,000, what about this year? We're 142,000 through July. So what's one club cost you to make and what do you sell it for? They range from the 119 to the one you're holding there is 179. And for your cost to make, this one's about $25. That one's about $35. The valuation seems really out of whack. Like you're asking for more than 10 times revenue valuation. Can you walk us through how you came up with that delusional 
valuation. <laughs> and you're wow, saying and you're really it. sitting next to Kevin a lot, Daniel. Yeah. We were on set for about 400 this year, and then COVID hit. That slowed well, us down. I mean, according to Robert, COVID should be helping you out. Well, it, seems it's, like it's it not. slowed us down big time for you know March and April. Look, at the end of the day, if you're just taking this as a commodity product and doing a multiple off of revenue, yeah, you're not going to get there on that. But what we've built here, and a lot of what goes into that valuation, is the foundation we've built. All the product development, the IP, the patents. So then how much have you guys raised or invested? We, we've raised about uh, about $2 million. There you wow. go. That's why the valuation's so high. You've yeah. you raised $2 million? Dollars? Did I hear that One right? and a half is actually from us. You put Sorry. your own Damn. money in? <laughs> wow. Look, I, I like the idea, guys, but it's very difficult to scale a new sport, as you know. Yes. Right? And inevitably, it takes a purse. If your price range is from $100 to $179 and you did $140,000 last year, you're looking at about 1,400 clubs, right? And that's just not enough traction for me to get excited. So for those reasons, I'm out. Okay. Guys, I love innovation and and new ideas, but I keep thinking about the lack of precision. These balls like flying all around and your valuation, I do have to say, I, I don't think is commensurate to where you're at right now. I wish you good luck, but I'm out. Thank you. Just because you say it's worth three million, that doesn't mean anything. It can't be worth three million bucks because you, you don't have any cash flow to sustain that, that valuation. If you look at what snowboarding did, and we, we model a lot of what happened in the 1970s, 80s with snowboarding. It took, it took a long time before, and then it went geometric. I get it, but I don't think you're at that trajectory right now. And I didn't think it was poop on a stick until I heard the sales. Now I really think it's poop on a stick. So no, absolutely not. I'm out. Alex and John, this is my thoughts. Kind bars are sold in almost every single course in America. There's several golfers that wear kind collars because they love it so much. I can introduce you to a lot of golfers. I can introduce you to golf courses. This is gonna be a huge amount of work. So I will do the deal at 33% uh, for the $300,000. You are so greedy. All right, guys, look, I love golf. I belong to a bunch of clubs. Here's what I can do for you. I can point you. Yeah. Just like Bad Birdie. It's not like I go there and do their books every day. But we talk regularly. He has a problem. He says, do I go left? Do I go right? That's what you need. What I need to know is, are you going to hustle? This is all about hustle. And I mean, we're going to do, I'm confident we're doing, with or without you, a million dollars in sales next year. I've drained my finances. I need this. I absolutely need this. I'm in. I'll give you the 300,000, but I want to be a one-third partner. I'll take the risk with you. I can help you with this thing. Same offer as Daniel? Same offer as but Daniel. But it only took him an hour longer to okay, make it. Okay, so, <laughs> so I think you gotta talk to because you just yeah. valued all the money that they've invested significantly. I, I did. But again, you know, it's either gonna go big or it's not. You gotta pick your shark. What are you gonna do? And you can counter. Yeah. How about 300 for 20 percent, either of you? I'll do 300 for 25 percent, and it goes away in five, four, three, two, take one. Done. Woo! Oh, all right. Guys, awesome. what Robert said is true. You guys need to stay in the fight and be hungry because you never met someone who's gonna hustle more than us. Congratulations, Congratulations. guys. Congratulations. I can't believe Congrats. it. That was awesome. That was awesome. Daniel's got nothing to worry about. We are committed and we are all in on this. We're gonna see this to the end, and we know it's gonna be a huge sport. Very often you have to step down to get the poop, but not anymore. <laughs> Next up is a stylish way to relax. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm the Chief Enthusiasm Officer. <laughs> and I'm Joe, and I'm the Chief Relaxation Officer. We're seeking $400,000 in exchange for 7% of our company. Wow. Between the emails popping up in your inbox, 24-hour news blaring from every screen, and constant pinging interruptions from your smartphone, we're all feeling more overwhelmed and stressed out than ever. 
We're all sick of feeling busy, hectic, and rushed. And our solution to this frustration is not another app or gadget. Our solution is the world's most ridiculously comfy hammock. <laughs> Introducing Yellow Leaf Hammocks. At Yellow Leaf Hammocks, we've perfected the hammock for the modern consumer. We've conquered every obstacle from creating a cocoon-like, no wobble design to a shockingly soft yard, so you won't get a rope burn when you're trying to relax, and they're completely weather safe. Now, we're breaking the boundaries of relaxation with our new invention, the Hammock Throne. The Hammock wow. Throne is an indoor-outdoor hammock chair that makes it possible to relax absolutely anywhere. With the Hammock Throne, you have a gorgeous piece of furniture that you can put out in your living room, on your tiny balcony, or even in your office. It extends back to create a full-length hammock, large enough for a seven-foot person, all within a diameter of just three and a half feet. Wow. And it swivels 360 degrees uh -huh. So you can angle it oh, to gaze cool. out the window or relax while you watch Shark Tank. <laughs> First, we perfected the hammock. Now we brought it into your living room. So, sharks, who wants to make the world a better place and join us in our quest to build a relaxation empire? So on the tables in front of you are specially selected hammocks. Oh. Uh, if you open these up, and first thing, you want to look at the label. They're all signed by the woman who made it. Um, we're a social enterprise. I like that. Yeah, they're all... Where do you uh, make them? We work with moms in rural Thailand to create high-wage jobs. What do they cost? What do you sell them for? The ones that we just gave you guys are our classic double. It's our top-selling size. They retail for $1.99. Ooh, that's not bad. Our current line ranges between $1.49 and $2.99. The 199 hammock, how much do you pay for it? $44 is our landed cost. So what is an average hammock made out of something like this? What is that cost? You can find a hammock for $30 on Amazon, to be perfectly you honest. It's not it gonna, it's you know? not gonna feel like this. It's not gonna look and like Rachel, this. Rachel, how much is the contraption? So this is the brand new hammock throne. This is our high-end hanging solution that we've just introduced. It's the That's first your of product. Many. You made yeah, this. We made, this. Yeah, we did. <laughs> um, so this one is somewhere in the neighborhood of 2200 Yeah. Whoa. Oh, wow. wow. But it's an indoor piece of furniture. Here's See, that seems like a lot. Tell us the story of how you got yeah. started by here. Our inspiration to start this was to literally end poverty in really vulnerable communities in the developing world. The idea for the company started when I initially went on a backpacking trip across Southeast Asia. Without me. Aww. Uh, we were living together in Boston at the time. And I stumbled across a hammock on a remote island and I was immediately struck by how soft it was. I was really impressed with the quality and I started asking some questions and learned that it was woven by this hill tribe community. It was part of an economic development program to help this hill tribe group out of poverty. And I was really struck by that in Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. So I went to this community and I got to meet the actual weavers and hear their stories. And I learned that this community that started making the hammocks with the help of an aid worker had been previously in debt slavery. And the thing that really struck me was a lot of people kept coming to this community asking to join the program, but they were being turned away because there weren't enough sales. And I thought, well, we can start a little hammock company and, you know, provide enough jobs in this region. So I came home with a backpack stuffed full of hammocks and I came home to Rachel. I was thrilled that my boyfriend <laughs> wanted to quit his finance job and start a hammock company, as you can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I was literally I was like, yeah, honey, a great idea. <laughs> what are your sales? This year, we're going to hit 1.3 million. Wow. Last year, we did 860,000. Your sales are primarily online? It's about 50-50 between a combination of direct-to-consumer sales through our website, as well as strategic partnerships. A big part of our early wholesale was kind of scattershot patio stores. We took a step back from that to focus on strategic partnerships. Who? Uh, it's Virgin uh, Voyages, which is Virgin's new cruise line business. Yep. So Virgin Voyages will be putting yellow leaf hammocks in every single balcony of every single cabin. What price do you get from them for these? They, they pay our wholesale price, but they'll also be um, retailing them. So they will be on the room service menus in the, on the, in the cabin and on the stores. The retail store is projected to more than double our current business. So you've got to be profitable then, right? Last year on uh, 860000 in revenue, our uh, net income was 110000 That's great. After paying yourself? After paying ourselves, yeah. John, Rachel. Yes. Here's my offer. Bam. Out of the five sharks here, I probably have the most credentials about building social impactful businesses. So I understand the challenges you're facing. I really love a lot of what you stand for, but you have a $100,000 profit with a crazy $5.7 million valuation. So my offer is as follows, and it's an explosive offer. I want 33% of the company. I'll give you what? $1 million. Wow. 
say yes or no, and then it's done. Wow, $1 million, 33%. Wow. You, you mentioned our profitability on last year. I want to mention our profitability on this year and what yeah, we're doing next year. Yeah, but that's a little wishful thinking, us, right? And I think you would, no, is go ahead. the order. Yeah. So on the 1.3 million that we're doing uh, this year, we're doing 360,000 in profit. One of the biggest things that we're looking to do with this money is we have a huge product roadmap of solutions. Rachel, so we stop started talking here. and take the deal. He's paying you over eight Why? times. Why, that might be another that's deal. For you. That's an amazing I, offer. We also recognize that we might not need all of that money right now. Oh. We also oh, might not. What are you doing? Well, we oh. might not. All right, well, wow. hey, hey, if we, you don't, we don't need all the money right now, you, I'm going to make you an offer. Are you we give don't. Up we don't. We're offer? not prepared to give away that much. Oh. That much oh. Listen, right. oh. I mean, I sit here, I listen, oh. I So walk. it's a helmet no. company. It's not I, Well, listen, he I just wanna... said maybe he doesn't need all that much money. So I will give you an offer. I'll go 400000 for 20%. Now, granted, his might be better offer for you. A million dollars for the 25% and both of you. I don't want to go to the million. How about 500000 for 25%? No. Yeah, that, that What's your least? counter for 25%? 600000 for 14%. Oh, wow. wow. I love the idea, and I think you guys are the real deal. Thank you. I will give you the 400000 for 15%. If you take the million dollars from me, you won't need to dilute yourselves again. You, you know might. how much money Kind has raised in its entire lifetime for the business? The total we ever raised in our entire history was $5.2 million. And we, we sell over a billion dollars in sales. I'll teach you and I'll help you run the business in an efficient way. Are you okay with 33% or is that too much for you? I think it's too much. Because What's the maximum that you're willing to do for someone that's gonna really roll their sleeves and help you? We're looking at the future. If you took 33% now, I worry that we would it would hurt us at a subsequent round when we grow. Why? What subsequent round? When I started my business, started with one product, I took out a bank loan, it was about $325,000. I paid it back within a year and I never had to take a loan or bring in an investor again. So listen, I don't think you need to just sit there and take on all these investors and take in a whole ton of money. You just need to be strategically smart and take in the right investor. But you need some That's money. the bottom line. So I'm gonna change my offer. My offer is this. I'm gonna go $200,000 Flat. Then I'm going to give you a loan of $200,000 at 7%. I'm going to fund purchase orders if you need them, and I'm going to ask for 17%. You may like you it, you may not. For but the one percent. thing that I can offer oh. is, is I can offer somebody who will hold your hand, take you down the road, do everything that you need. Lord. I care about helping women. I care about helping the environment. I care about helping the world. And I really like the two of you, so I care about helping you. I love you. the two of you. Lori, thank you, you so guys. much. We love you guys. We're making it hard on them. What's the minimum percentage and what dollar do you want? Focus, Joe. You too. <laughs> what do you do $1 million for 25%? Just because I love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're, <making> oh, <laughs> We're gonna change some lives. I never thought he'd go down. It's never that. happened before in Shark Tank history when someone came in here for four hundred thousand and walked out with a million. I'm really excited to work with you. I'm I'm so make a huge thrilled. difference. I'm so thrilled. Thank, Thank you. you. Congrats. Good Not deal. An expensive hammock. I hope Daniel saw that we have as much passion as he does. We want to build this not just for ourselves and not just for our customers, but for the people that make our products. And we want to create a transformative brand. And he's going to be the perfect partner to create that. Next up is a convenient version of a traditional Middle Eastern snack. Hello, Sharks. My name is John Soriel. I'm from Washington, D.C., and I'm seeking a $300,000 investment in exchange for 10% equity in my product. Sharks, being the son of Egyptian immigrants, I loved the East Mediterranean foods I grew up on. 
The problem is my grandmother didn't ship nationwide. So I took authentic <laughs> recipes from the motherland and gave them a fresh new taste and look with Tada Foods. Tada is a frozen line of products that brings one of the world's most popular dishes, falafel, to the masses. Falafel is an amazingly savory blend of chickpeas, aromatic herbs, fresh veggies, and spices. And we've made it super easy and convenient to enjoy with our falafel street wraps. In just three minutes, you can say goodbye to bland, boring bean burritos and finally eat something that's bursting with flavors. And that's not all. For those looking to eat gluten-free, we created the world's first and only stuffed falafel popper. That's right, I took the already perfect falafel and I figured out how to stuff it on the inside with one of our creamy signature dips. So Sharks, who wants to help me take America on an exotic culinary journey of deliciously prepared plant-based foods ready to heat and eat any time of day? Bring it. Yeah. Wanna eat? Feed yeah. us, John, feed us. Feed us. <laughs> so it's a falafel ball. Cool. Well, there's two, two lines of products. Okay. Right. Are they all the same? No. Thank you. Lori. Thank you. All right. So what you guys have there from left to right, you have two versions of our best-selling falafel street wrap. The first one, that's our sweet and spicy harissa with lebni. Mm. Wow, this is really good. That second one is the lemon roasted garlic hummus. Oh, okay. very nice. And then you have the poppers. It's harissa hummus, cucumber dill yogurt, and our original hummus flavor. John, this feels very fresh, like it was made a minute ago. Thank you so is much. Is it made a minute ago, or is it from the package, and is it refrigerated, that, frozen? How that has you... been sitting on the shelf somewhere in a retail store. I actually bought it off the shelf and brought it here. So really? I don't know the manufacturer date on it, but you know we get about an 18-month shelf life on our product. Oh, that's right. So in the refrigerated set or in the frozen set? In the frozen set. This is a frozen product. It's chickpea, right? Chickpea based, so, yeah. Tell us about your background. Uh, my, my parents are immigrants. They actually left uh, Egypt. There was some religious persecution that was happening. They came to America. And when you're the son of immigrant parents, they're really liberal and open-minded. As long as you take a profession in medicine, <laughs> engineering, <laughs> law, or medicine, right? Uh -huh. And so I, I studied chemical engineering at Johns Hopkins University. Um, I graduated, I worked in wow. oil refining. I traveled all over the world, but I found it to be a really hollow experience. Um, you know, I just, it wasn't a passion of mine. What do you sell it for, and okay. what is the cost? The seven and a half ounce falafel street wraps retail for $3.99, and the eight ounce bag of the gluten-free falafel poppers retails for $4.99. Cost me a dollar nine. Hey, John, it says here you give 25% of your profits to charity. Yes, 25% of distributed profits from the original founders is going to non-for-profits. So does that mean a specific one, or? Well, yes, we have a few, but the biggest one works with impoverished children. They try to break the po poverty cycle through education, medical care, and food programs. Break down the numbers for me. Lifetime sales is over 8.2 million. Wow. Trailing, trailing 12 months is 1 million. How and many the year years? before that? 1 million. So we've, so we've stayed, you've we've stayed, stayed steady at you're one flat. Million. Yeah, we're flat because the land is there and we just, we can't supply it. We were the fastest growing frozen brand in the country. And then. And top, and then we ran into a big production issue. Uh -huh. And so then we went from 2.3 to 1.7, and now we're at one. What okay. happened? Wait, what, so, you were using so, a co-packer? Yeah, so it was fantastic. We were achieving great margins with them. They became financially insolvent. You couldn't make product. I couldn't make product. I would show up, and they'd have four people on the floor. This takes dozens of wow. people, right? So I would stay all night with the staff. I would, I would suit up, and I was shoveling chickpeas myself. But at the same time, I was flying all over the country trying to source new co-packers. We fixed that problem. On this million of sales in the last 12 months, yeah. how much did you lose? Say 2018, we lost 200,000. The more you're talking, I'm less excited. When you first came out, I was let's, like, let, woo, falafel. Let's get you more excited. All right. We are in the top 10 of all frozen products nationwide, and we were the fastest growing in the frozen natural space. Not anymore, you're flat. You know, hearing your story yeah. um, resonates to me, but I think that there are some other sharks on the panel here sure. that can help accelerate you yeah. faster. Yeah. And so for those reasons, I'm out. So how much have you invested, and have you taken in any so outside investors? We've only ever done a friends and family round. The total round was $300,000. How much equity did you have to give up for the $300,000? I gave away 75%. You want 25%? Yes. You, so gave sorry, sorry, John, you gave up 75? Yeah. You gave up 75%? Okay, so, what, so John, walk us through that. Okay, so that's yeah. a lot, and that has a yeah. lot of implications, sure. right? Originally, it was 50%, right, to the investors. 
and I had the other 50%. So then what we ended up doing was this, the other investors were like, no, we want to be part of the giving, okay? So we then distributed that 25% that was reserved for the, the social causes, and we distributed it amongst all of us. Wait, 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 wait. that doesn't Hang make on. sense. You're wait. giving up We're 25% talking about, wait, wait, of the Robert. equity to the social causes, not of the profits. Correct. Oh, John, John. Maybe I'm not doing a good job explaining this. The investors, the four investors, myself and the other three investors, or the founders, own 100% okay. of the company. All and right. in each of our own equity stake, we've pledged 25% of what we make to these charities. John, look, here you are facing an inventory shortage. Yep. Why didn't your investors loan you more? Our total liability is 445000 That's why they're not loaning you more money. John, sometimes you love the singer, yeah. but you hate the song. Well, I'll sing you a different song. What would you like? Yeah. I'll sing no, you a different listen, song. No, listen, seriously. I wish you luck, but this isn't for me. I'm out. John, look, the food's great. As we peeled the onion on your store, oh yeah. my goodness. The oh. cap table, it doesn't need cosmetic surgery. It needs no, it doesn't. major surgery. It. It was okay. What do you mean? It's for investors. Four people. It's, four it's for alignment. investors. No, no, yeah. no. He just... Let me finish, Mark. I mean, it's too much work for me. I'm sorry, my friend. Food's great. I really don't see it as that I'm much. Out. I appreciate I'm out, I'm out. It's just too, it's sure. too much work. Daniel, I'm betting in the journey of kind, you face this problem somewhere along the road. What does this guy have to do? Um, kind. Mm -hmm. When he was born, yeah. we were in a situation not very dissimilar to yours. Right. I'd lost about a million dollars in sales because one of our manufacturers had changed the ingredients, yeah. and we were this far away from just closing everything. Yeah. And it's fascinating to me when I think back that kind grew out of one of the toughest years of my life, and out of that darkness came incredible light, and kind today sells in 300,000 stores, over a billion dollars a year in, at retail, and so it can happen. And when I think about you and I see how you haven't given up after every single thing that Correct. has hit you, I just want to understand what's motivating you. Why haven't you just gone back to be an engineer? What, what does this mean to you? It's perspective, right? When you go to other parts of the world and you see how people live, right, you realize that there are things, people are fighting for their lives. That's why I'm not like, I want to be a profitable company and I've worked really hard and we, And it has been difficult, but I think about my family and those people who are struggling. And I want, I want this to be a success because it'll, it'll impact their lives. I'm sorry. I've never cried like that, I'm sorry. Uh, and I understand you think it's complex because we've been through a lot, but it just means that I know how to keep our company going you have someone who has proven themselves, who scaled it, has the team, has the manufacturing. We just want to succeed. Your story resonates a lot with me, as I said earlier. Um, and you have an incredibly quality product, and you Thank have you. an incredible passion, but you have a mess in terms of the system that you have that needs to be fixed. So I, I don't see how with $300,000 you get out of it. You just need right. a little bit more. So if you want the $300,000, I'll do it for 20%. Wow. Or I'll give you a half a million dollars for 25% so that we can do this properly. Okay. Wow. Wow. And if we do any of the, the bigger option, that money that would be to buy out a portion of all of your investors because I'm going to be doing all of the work with you, so I want you to derive okay. the benefits. I actually would like to get you to a bigger stake than you currently have. Can we do 500000 at 25% but with then a uh, a line of credit for accounts receivable for another half million? I will do the $500,000 for 25%, and I will most likely give you a line of credit, but it's not part of this deal. I'm gonna sit down with you and your investors sure. and review the 400 some thousands that they're owed, the equity that they have, and then as part of our next negotiation, I will be happy to provide maybe a million dollar line of credit, whatever it's necessary, but it will, it will have to but before be Before you jump, the two, two of the people, or three people potentially, that have been there with you in the beginning, since the yeah. beginning, he wants to try to buy out. John, with fair terms. John. You've been through the wars, mm -hmm. and when somebody is in a foxhole with you, yes. you don't buy them out, right? That's exactly right. 
So, but I, from what I understand, that's an option. It's not yeah, no, something. You said your investors signaled that they're willing to do whatever it takes. Right now, the investors are dying to just get their money back. They're about to you don't know that though. You don't know that. Well, though, it's right? pretty well, obvious it, from it, the it, numbers. It, it, no, it, what valuation not. are you buying them out? Just right? going back and saying, is there a price to buy you out at? Means I think it's going to go up in value, and I'm not taking you for the ride, right? I think I can create more value than I'm going to pay you. Otherwise, you wouldn't buy them out, right? You don't always know that, Mark. Yeah, maybe of course. They just want, you, maybe they just want to get some cash out. To Mark's point. My partners, they're my friends. They believed in me when, I, when it was just a concept. So as long as this is not like some type of take John, what, what about this, John? John, John, this John. Is a I'll, give, I'll give you, you $300,000 for 20%, less than his, but I'll give you another $500,000 line of credit. So now there's two offers. Both are icons in respective industries. Is there any way to structure a deal with both of you? Because I just want to make clear that I'm doing this to give you a hand. I, I know I really you don't need to do this. I don't deal. do charity. Uh, I, wanna, I want you to win, but the terms that I'm offering are, are, are very generous. John, you got to make a decision. You have to decide. All right, what are you going to do? Would you do half a million for 20%? No. I feel extremely blessed, and Daniel, I accept your offer. <laughs> We're gonna kill it together. We're definitely gonna kill it. We're gonna make falafel the sexiest food on earth. <laughs> oh my Unbelievable. God. Sexy falafel. That was a good one, Daniel. Oh my God. Choosing between Daniel and Mark was one of the most difficult decisions I've ever made. But Daniel is an icon in our industry. To have him in our corner, supporting us, not just financially, but like working with us and helping us to grow to that and to what we hope to be a national brand. It's just, it's just the best outcome I can, I could have hoped for.